Welcome back to the Software Testing Happy Hour. Once again, I'm your host, Bren Jenkins. With me today, to my left, Sneha Cruz. To my right, Matt Kubal. Welcome I'm back. back, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Our resident beer snob is finally back. <laughs> yep. Has finally decided to join us mm-hmm. out of his drunken yeah. stupor. Grace, <laughs> grace us with your presence. As you were off in Italy and all sorts of things. Sober enough. And drinking beer shop. other places in yeah. other countries. Very Absolutely. rude. Uh, just one. Just one? Beer in Italy is not good. Yes, true. We don't have any, or France. We don't have any Italian sponsors, do we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you'd like to send wine. We'll take great. it. I like wine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So today, we're going to be talking about top technical skills for testers. Um, this information and in, in the questions in this were from actually from an ebook um, created by TestRail called The Skills of Agile Testers. So there's, there's a few other... Yeah, why were you trying that one already? <laughs> Weren't we supposed to go over the beers yeah. first? Sorry. Yeah, well, I'm, I was going to do okay. a teaser of the, and okay. then get okay, into yeah, the beers. Go ahead. You guys take her down a notch. Okay. So in this uh, in this, this ebook, there's actually a few other topics. Um, it discusses such things like everyday agile practices for every tester, top programming skills for testers, and there's even a 30 days of agile testing checklist. But along that is also a section, top six technical skills for testers. So that's kind of what we wanted to dive into today. But before we do that, first, I got to thank our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Keep going. Uh, I got to thank our sponsor, <laughs> Checkpoint Technologies, for making this all possible. Checkpoint Technologies <laughs> helps organizations deliver higher quality applications to market faster. And we do that through expert services like staff augmentation, consulting, assessments, training, mentoring, and more, and best of breed software solutions. Spending like at micro- an extra cost. <laughs> <laughs> and best of breed software partners like Microfocus, Atlassian, Mobile Labs, Cobaton, um, QA Symphony, and more. So Atlassian. with, I said Atlassian. Oh, okay. Yeah, you were too busy making a, another spanking, spanking reference <laughs> during the Sponsor plug. <laughs> My bad. So with that, I am going to pass it over to our welcomed back resident beer snob to uh, introduce what we're going to be sampling today. Yeah, today we have Doppelbox. Doppelbox. The Doppelbox. Doppelbox. First one. What is. are Doppelbox? Just double box in German? Yeah. They're doppels. Doppels. I don't know. Doppelgangers? That is the word for double in German, I believe. Doppel. Yeah. I hope you're right now. I, th- I hope so too. <laughs> if I'm not right, cut that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Along with the spanking part. <laughs> it is a Bach with more alcohol, essentially. <laughs> uh, first one is the Duck Rabbit. Um, what is the name of this? I don't even... Duck Rabbit? It doesn't Doppelbach? matter. Blogger? Doppelbach? That's fine. I couldn't decide on a name, so it's like... It's not bad. That's word the, salad. Not the first one I tried. And we got the Polliner Salvatore. The Spot and Optimator. <laughs> On tap. Mm, same here. And this guy, the best beer of all time. Which is that beer I made a stank. Okay, I'm gonna at. go ahead. So we've actually done a little bit of sampling before this well, episode. I just did it on video. And you did. Really stanky so, face. Yeah. <laughs> because it tastes. Will like be our bacon. thumbnail for this video. Um, so I have to ask our resident beer snob, Matt, which one is worse, this one or the Midnight Oil from the first episode? This one. This one by far. Okay. By far. All right. It tastes like it does taste like somebody put bacon bits in here. Right. Bacon bits and it's, liquid smoke. Into so a this beer. is yeah. not just a Doppelbach. It is a Rausch Doppelbach, which Rausch, I believe, is the German word. And for garbage. Cut this out as well. <laughs> <laughs> For, it's the, it's the I feel like word. this video might be cut a lot. Quick. It's the German word for dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely true. Uh, yeah. It's the German word for smoke, I think. So, or maybe okay. fire. Okay. So I took German for two years in college. It's a smoke. Paid off. I got obviously. Nothing. Smoke Doppelbach, which is absolutely disgusting. It's pretty bad, but we're gonna try it in the end, anyways. <laughs> That's what we're gonna chug. Maybe. At the end. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna slam plug our nose and yeah. <laughs> All right. So to go into the six uh, technical skills, well, we're trying the duck rabbit, I believe, first, which mm-hmm. is actually very delicious. Very good. By the way. It's okay. Okay. All right. We'll get into that at the end. But <laughs> um, the first skill that it talks about in this article is version control. So I'm going to pass it over to you and, guys. And real quick, you yes. meant to say that aren't automation. That aren't right. automation. Thank you. Yes, technical. that was actually technical testing skills that aren't automation. Correct. Because when people think of technical, mm-hmm. they immediately think of automation. Like so math. this is going beyond this. So um, version control. Why Why is that such a top technical skill needed for testers? Um, especially with like the agile and DevOps <laughs> movement. 
people are storing more and more, not even just automation scripts, but a lot more of your tests in general are being stored in yeah. these VCSs. Did you make up VCSs? that? VCSs, version control you, systems, oh, I plural. Oh, okay, yep. VCSs. Yep. <laughs> um, so, you know, you have to have an understanding of how those work, how to change where your file systems <clears throat> point to, how to make sure you right. have that repository downloaded and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, Whether I mean, it be Git or SVN or whatever you choose. Right, everybody's using that now. So as a tester, if you don't, if you can't interact with the version control system that your team is using, you're less useful. Correct. Right. So One of the things that the article actually points out as well is by understanding and knowing those systems, you can actually go into the branches of code and start performing some exploratory mm -hmm. testing as well um, before it merges further upstream. So again, you're catching those errors yeah. early on before it gets down, which is and, the and whole. In regards to automation, it helps there too, because then you can look at those properties and things and pieces of code to sure. understand it better. Right. I would know that better because he's the automation guy. Right, I mean, you could even store your automation tests in your version control. So uh, even as an automation tester, it's a, it's a good thing to know. So, you know, whether it's through yeah. TFS or even ALM or something like that, where you're version controlling automation tests, it's a, it's a useful skill. Yeah. And I think more and more, too, as we see testing kind of stop being its own little department and merging into, right, and becoming part of, you know, Dev and Test more and more, I think, as we see in the future, They're it's going to become, together, yeah, really, a blended yeah. team, and it's going to eventually be just one team. So you yeah. have to have kind of that cross work function. <clears throat> yeah. Cross functionality. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's a huge <clears throat> part of that. Cool. Makes sense. Um, technical skill number two, viewing log files. Why is that helpful and important? Uh, as a tester, if you know, the more, the more you can um, track down what's causing an issue, the better. Troubleshooting, um, root cause analysis. Yeah. Analysis. If all you can do is, is find a bug and then hand it off, I mean, that's great that you found the bug, but if you can say, you know, tell your developer, you know, I looked at the log file, you know, we're seeing this error specifically. Maybe you don't know what that error means, but you can at least say, "Here's the here's the error I found." Cuts so they down don't have to research dig. time right. and yeah, right. you're right. saving time and time is <clears> money. Yeah. Right. The the more groundwork you can do for your for your developers uh, in fixing that bug, right, uh, the easier you make it for them. And they like you better. Yeah, that's also true. I mean, right. you say yeah. that, but it's it, uh, it's it true. makes it easier to be a cohesive environment and work together because everyone's pulling their Teams own weight. Teams work together. And, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, working together, faster, right. harder, yeah. stronger. And you might find out that your bug isn't... That's a song. Kanye song. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> you might also find out that your bug isn't actually a bug. It's a it's an issue with your system or something like that. Right. It's, it's unrelated. To software, or it could have just so. been purely a test issue that just was a fluke. And, yeah. Right. So. Cool. Number three, the browser developer console. <clears throat> so to me, this is useful whether you're doing automation, whether you're doing performance, any sort of just even just working with your application, it's very useful because you want to be able to inspect your objects and understand right. the properties behind them. So if you don't know how to do that, I think it would be really hard to even really understand applications, maybe? Is that too, too you, extreme to say? It's Again, it's just more useful that you can, you can dig down into the code uh, that you're seeing, or not necessarily the code, but at least the, that object model and right. see, you know, <clears throat> why maybe if that button that you expect to be there, if, if it's in there, uh, but you're not seeing it for some reason, or if it's just totally missing. Um, and then the, the object model, I mean, that's also used for, for Selenium. So if you, yeah. in order to, to use Selenium, you'd have to understand that stuff anyway. Right. So, And I know you mentioned that it was important too, like when stuff doesn't load right, you at least know the tag behind it, so you know what mm -hmm. it should have been, right, on images that we, we talked about earlier, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit. Actually, on the next topic would probably be a little more appropriate. Yeah. The number four is the accessibility testing tools. Um, and this me, was this was pretty new to me. Let's let's drink and move on. That's true. Actually, actually, it's a good point. What was the next one? It was oh, you need you need this. Pollen. The Polliner Salvatore. Done. Yep. Polliner. Oh, you're gonna mix those? I mean, there's not much to. There you go. Not much to mix. You guys carry on without me. No. It's good. No, you're gonna no, watch me pour. So the accessibility testing tool, um, Matt is, you know, he where he works um, out at the VA. Yep. Um, he um, they have a team specifically dedicated to accessibility. The VA has teams that do that. Yeah. It's it's very big and regula regulatory. I have trouble with words. 
Well, there. big in government, um, you're you're required to. I think to, in uh, any comply with in any government regulated any regulated industry. industry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, bigger industries are going to do it regardless because you want those customers that you know have low vision or, or whatever. Um, but if you can test those sorts of things, if you understand how to test those, um, then you don't. If you have that skill, then you know your your organization doesn't have to come up with special testers that can do that sort of thing. Right. And if you understand <clears throat> how the accessibility stuff works. You can also fold that into your automation as well. So a lot of times you can you can use your automation to look at the tags behind the scenes to make sure that somebody using a special tool with, that has low vision that they're gonna when they mouse over something it's gonna gonna you know read the correct information or pop up um, the expected um, you know larger text right. size of something. Yeah, I mean I think the gist here or the, you know kind of the one main point here is, is there's definitely regulated industries that this sort of stuff is required. Yeah. But even if it's not required, if you have that skill and you can test that and you can make your applications more accessible to everybody, mm -hmm. even though you don't have to, that's a good thing, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, there's people with, with vision impairments and that sort of stuff using all sorts of applications, not just the ones that are actually regulated and have to. Mm -hmm. So it just I, and I would brings say value. In general, yeah, the more you know, the more you can test, it's always going to be right. helpful. So. Yep. Good point. Number five, virtual machines. I'd like to also continue. Include containerization in this kind Containerization. Of they, right. they discuss containerization, don't they? Virtual box? Yeah. Yeah. Citrix, I, re I read the Citrix article. On here? No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Going off your knowledge. It, you know, and I'll, and I'll actually read a summary of kind of what it says. Virtual machines are helpful tools to test multiple operating systems and versions of software. Obviously, we know that. In order to verify that software will work for a wide range of operating systems and browsers. I mean, that kind of sums up the whole right. idea behind it which we all kind of right know. if it's you're always testing really... on the same environment same os and right. everything you're not really what good doing... are you really doing yeah. i mean and that's a that, very narrow window right, exactly and that and this you know leads into like mobile testing as well you're trying to test on the yeah. vast majority of popular devices so right. imagine how many different ones are there and right so yeah definitely and that's a big challenge um for teams is is getting the correct environment set up for their mm -hmm. testing it's you know usually you, you can a lot of teams will have people dedicated to getting their environment set up just for testing and mm -hmm. um, I mean I know I've been to organizations where a good amount of them don't have test environments they're all testing on prod which is absurd to think about but it happens often more often than people right. realize I think right well I, yeah I mean I think one of the things to keep in mind is anytime you read any of these kind of articles or these you know summaries and all that it's like these are all scenarios for perfect worlds that don't right. actually happen in the real world. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to just take what you can from these mm -hmm. types of things and apply it to your, you know, organization. Right. But nobody's doing everything exactly how you're supposed to do it. I would say VMs is probably the of. most drastic change in the ease of testing in the last few years, I would think. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy to stand up a virtual machine now. Yeah. Right. Especially yeah. with like AWS, if you're using cloud infrastructure, you know, right. even with VMware or Docker yeah, now. Yeah, spinning like them up in a matter of, you minutes, know, minutes, seconds. seconds yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yep. It changes things hugely. Right. Test your app across every browser, right. every operating system. Beta testing has become so much more popular because of that, because you can, you right. know, have multiple instances, applications right. rolled out. So. Totally Sorry. Except for OS X. <laughs> can't, can't virtualize that. You can't really virtualize a lot of Mac stuff, right? Right, not at all. For some reason, well, somebody will maybe comment on this video saying you can, say you can stand up a 10.6 version or something. I'm sure some sure, really old version. 10.6, that's yeah. helpful. Some really old version. Because there's so many people running 10.6. Well, at least one of the companies. You mean on Macos? They hate when I say that. I got that. an old G4 Your tower. IOS? I got an old G4 tower in my garage. It's still running OS 9. <laughs> it actually For, dual boots OS 9 and OS 10. Yeah, no OS 8. No, no. no. Couldn't find it. This that was old? from like ninety-seven. No, it was like two thousand one, maybe. I got it. Yeah, good stuff. Can't get rid of it. It was the first one I bought with my own money. I spent. <laughs> that was like the year I spent you an extra. I spent an extra eight hundred dollars for a zip drive. Oh, wow. oh wow. that did. <laughs> Is that when you still had to buy wireless cards? You think? I went to those oh, days. No, I think it was built out on the Mac. I don't. They had the I little can't cards. Remember. But it was it was. No, I remember, but I you know, 
know. <clears throat> I got the super drive with the DVD and the CD burner. Ooh. That was actually an extra like five. I was or cleaning up my drawer and I found an entire tower of DVD recordables and yeah, wire no these them. in my drawer. <laughs> you should bring them to work because we need no, them. No, they were in the work oh, my here. work oh, okay. drawer. Yeah, we probably I'm pointing that because we need them. I mean, right. I've been here seven years, so it could be. Hold and on, hold on. Did you finish your beer? No. No. Oh, it's you been did. like five minutes. We're gonna get to the end. I'm just gonna drink out of the spot and bo- bottle because no, that's my gonna, favorite. No, you're gonna drink this I'm one. Not drinking you all bought of that, that one. Yeah, I we didn't. I taste so it. we didn't even name what it was because we don't need to. <laughs> well, it's because it's not one written that in shall English. not be named. It's not written in English. It's like I it's actually fish. Ridiculous. Are we going to be able to air this episode at all? Is there anything valuable coming out of our We've mouths? We've said some valuable like stuff a... in the middle. It looks like there's an English translation that says... Schlink. Here, just zoom in on the camera so people Schlink. can read it themselves. Yeah. We'll oak put a link smoke. to it. There's definitely oak smoke to it. Yeah, that's all there is I don't to think... It. Or dumpster fire. It says dumpster fire for <laughs> <Right>. sure. <laughs> dumpster fire. And then finally, um, analytics, essentially. Um, I mean... Understanding. Analytics, yeah. monitoring tools, monitoring performance. Yeah, I mean, and not even just that. Analytics in general, understanding what your right. what your results show, and understanding what you're testing and what results right. you're trying to find. I mean, so it kind of goes back to what I was saying with view log files. Is that uh, if you if you are seeing an issue that you think is a bug in your application, and you can go look oh, at, at some performance results as a tester and say, oh, the the bug I'm seeing <clears throat> is because um, is because something it's because the server is running slow. It's not really a bug in the application. Right. It's a right. performance problem. Performance issue. So you don't have to go to your developers and say, "There's a bug here." You can go Please straight, fix it. You straight can, to your system. Yeah, you can go to your your ops person or whatever and say, "Right, you know, we got this performance issue on this server." And again, saving time, saving resources, just getting to the root cause right. quicker. Cool. Yeah. That's it. Was there anything else on there? No. Mm. I mean, I think overall, what what it's really saying is, you know, more and more people within QA and testing just need to become cross-functional and cross-functional. be able to. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially the gist more. of it all. Really. Yeah, I mean, eventually, you know, manual to testing. It. It's that's o- the TLDR on it. Yeah, you can't just be one thing. Right. Yeah. You can't just you do know. automation. You can't just do performance. You can't just do manual testing. Right. right. You need to have a cross. And none of those are ever going to go away, skills. but they're always going to be. You're always going to be more valuable knowing more things and being able to play more roles. And that's why you see positions like SDET and <clears throat> DevOps engineers and things like that come right. out because Full they stack have... engineers. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's the only positions you see advertised anymore. Right. They're never... It's not no just, one's looking for a manual <laughs> tester yeah, very often. Yeah, it's not often. just manual tester. And not saying manual testers are ever going to go away, but making yourself more valuable to your team is always going to benefit you. So. Right. And a lot of these skills aren't super difficult. No? No, not really. That's it. So, beer reviews. We still have, we didn't even do the last. Did I've I already one? tried them. Uh, yeah, you're did, slow. Did you move on? I moved on. I actually kind of like the Polliner. I'm not even tasting the smoky don't, dumpster don't fire do anymore. Because I did taste it the first drink. Don't do it. I like this duck rabbit the most. Duck I have, that was your I have a bunch with, of my fridge for no some name. reason. I do names. have a lot of those in my fridge. Really? Yeah, they came from, from a Christmas party if you want some. It's from North Carolina. <laughs> it's June. Hmm. Farmville, North Carolina. Mm. Never heard of it. Mm. Is the duck rabbit? Is that your favorite? Mine's Is the it like optimator. The yeah, that's an animal. Duck rabbit. It's a duck and a rabbit too, right? together. Isn't mm. a jackalope real? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> So yours is the polliner, yours is the duck rabbit, mine's the But you guys didn't try that smoke. I mean, I love optimism. I tried it before the camera started rolling, I promise. I tried it at the first sip of the camera because I started working right. on Nobody's going to read you until you actually put chug it to your it. lips. Chug, chug, chug. No? All right. Oh, With that, we're out. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Until Cheers. next time. I didn't even Don't leave that.